Hello everyone. Welcome back to AJ Khan Geotechnical Forum and I was delivering my uh, lecture on bearing capacity of shallow foundations. Uh, I have already covered part one and now the part two. So in part two we have uh, these contents, the Tarzaghi's bearing capacity equation for strip footing, then Meyerhoff's channel bearing capacity equation and also we'll be talking about effect of water table on bearing capacity calculation. So to start with, this is the Terzaghi's equation, which was proposed back in 1943. And uh, Karl Terzaghi, he actually proposed it for strip footing. By strip footing, we mean uh, the width of the footing is very small compared to the length of the footing. For example, if you are uh, dealing with a load bearing uh, structure, uh, where the footing size is, for example, uh, 1.2 meter in width and say 30 meter in length, that is a situation of strip footing and this is also this is also called sometimes as plain strain condition because the uh, length is far greater than uh, compared to the uh, width of the uh, foundation the situation is similar for an earth embankment as well for earth embankment also we have this strip footing situation or plain strain condition so please keep this in mind that uh, strip footing also refers to plain strain condition right so here on the right hand side we have a schematic presentation of a footing which uh, is uh, a strip footing of course which has only b and length we have not shown because it is uh, great uh, it, it, it is large in dimension compared to b and the foundation is located at a depth df from the uh, ground level and the surcharge weight of the, i mean the surcharge of the backfill is q uh, at this foundation level and the soil properties below this foundation level is the cohesion is C and the angle of friction is denoted by phi and the unit weight of the subsoil below the footing level or the excavation or the foundation level is denoted by comma 2 prime. Uh, please note that we, I have uh, used two notations for gamma. One is for above the foundation level and another is for below the foundation level. So these are the notations here. Uh, QU is of course the gross ultimate bearing capacity. We have we already know the difference between gross and net. I will talk more about that with, with examples as well. So uh, this equation of Terzaghi actually uh, gives you the gross ultimate bearing capacity of the soil and of the subsoil. I mean the soil below the foundation level. What is the capacity of the subsoil to carry the load? That is the bearing capacity. And uh, in addition to all these uh, terms here, which I have already explained, we have three more uh, terms in the equation, which is NC, NQ, and N gamma. The NC, NQ, and N gamma, these are all bearing capacity factors, and these are essentially a uh, function of angle of friction. So if you know from, uh, from your test results and from uh, other secondary data, if you, if you have the values of cohesion below the footing level and if you can calculate if you know the angle of friction and on that basis if you calculate bearing capacity factor you calculate q and q and all these things and you put it in this equation you will definitely uh, obtain the uh, gross ultimate bearing capacity for this strip footing which is very simple and straightforward but remember this Terzaghi's equation has uh, some limitations. First of all, this is applicable only for the strip footing, but what if you have a square footing or a rectangular footing and if there are many different ratios of L by B, uh, uh, then uh, which equation to use? I mean, you can't use these Terzaghi's equations. And also, uh, what about the uh, influence of depth? I mean, if you put the foundation at shallow depth, what is the effect? And if you put it at a larger depth, what will be the other effects on the uh, bearing capacity and also in this case the load is applied uh, centrally directly vertically through the column uh, through the center of the column i mean uh, footing but what if you have an inclined load that may occur from a tower foundation for a tower foundation and all these things so uh, taking all those uh, other issues into account. Meyerhoff, uh, back in 1963, he proposed rather a more general, of course, a modified one from the Terzaghi's original one. He proposed a uh, more general equation for cross ultimate bearing capacity. And in this equation, you will find uh, some factors which are denoted by capital F, uh, FCS, that means the, I mean, everything that 
comes with an with an s is uh, is a shape factor okay so f c s f q s and f gamma s these are all shape factors f c s this one is associated with the associated with the first term of the bearing capacity equation where there is cohesion that is why it is c and the second one uh, it is a shape factor but this is associated with the surcharge portion that is the second term of the bearing capacity equation and the third one f gamma s uh, that has a gamma subscript because this is associated with this part uh, gamma part and uh, associated definitely with the third term of the bearing capacity equation. okay so we have shape factors uh, which are essentially the functions of b and l that is that is the width and length of the footing and also the angle of friction and the depth factors essentially these are functions of df and b and angle of friction and the inclination factor if there is an inclined load which i have not shown here i should have i have shown it in, in my next slides uh, uh, it, if it makes an angle uh, of alpha with the vertical so it will be all these factors will be function of uh, alpha right so uh, the bearing capacity factors our first issues this nc nq and n gamma how to obtain all these things these are remember these are essentially the functions of angle of friction and uh, different equations have been proposed by different authors and researchers and for particularly compatible for Meyerhoff's equation these are the uh, expressions for calculation of nq n gamma and nc okay you'll find many different nq n gamma and nc in your textbooks but these are more pertinent to the Meyerhoff's equation so this nq is a function of phi this is the expression n gamma is a function of phi and nq so first of all you'll have to calculate nq otherwise you won't be able to calculate n gamma and nc uh, for phi equal to zero condition uh, NC has been uh, estimated as 5.14 through series of experiments. So there is no expression for uh, calculating NC uh, for phi equal to zero. Okay, so this has been obtained through experiments, series of experiments carried out by different researchers. And for phi equal to zero, of course, you have uh, a mathematical expression on the basis of which you can calculate NC, and this is equal to NQ minus 110 phi. So I have. Uh, uh, kind of uh, populated uh, some values of nq and gamma and nc for different range of uh, five values here using these expressions so you can see here that is quite handy when you will work you can remember uh, these equations if you like you can also carry this table along with you wherever you go uh, in your design office or in your briefcase or, in, or, on, or on your laptop uh, so that you can readily calculate the bearing capacity factors and please note that the nc values will be nc value will always be at least 5.14 nq at least one uh, but n gamma can be as low as zero for phi equal to zero condition n gamma will be zero that means this third term will be uh, will not be there anymore in the equation of the general uh, sorry uh, in the equation of gross ultimate bearing capacity when phi is equal to zero this third term will not be there right similarly we can calculate the shape factors i have just given an example here because depending on your foundation size b and l you will have different fcs and fqs so what i have done is i have uh, i have carried out the exercise for uh, b equal to 2 and l equal to 4 and these are the values of uh, fcs fqs and f gamma s uh, please note here that uh, there are two expressions for phi equal to 0 if cs is equal to this and if qs and f gamma s equal to 1 which is here okay and there is nothing uh, no expression between uh, phi equal to 0 and 10 everything is uh, for phi is greater than 10 so these uh, are the equations or the expressions if cs equal to this and if qs and gamma s equal to this please note for the shape factors for 
all the cases of phi if q s and if gamma s will be equal to will be equal okay that is why uh, i have used one column for fcs fcs which will vary but if q s and if gamma s will always be same so they have occupied only one column okay and here for uh, although i have uh, done the calculation for phi equal to 5 actually there is no such expression for phi equal to 5 in fact there is nothing between 0 and 10 so i have omitted this one and made it red or highlighted it as red uh, the next one is the depth factor and these are the expressions for depth factors here you just hold the slide pause it and note it down and of course i'll, I'll upload my pdf uh, file as well for all these lectures so the FCD is this again the FQD and F gamma D. FQD and F gamma D are same for phi equal to zero and also for phi greater or equal to ten. There is again nothing between zero and ten. I could not gather. Okay, so uh, this angle for this angle of friction, I have uh, highlighted this as red because there is no such expression. You can't calculate for uh, anything between zero and ten degree. And the inclination factors, it is a function of alpha and phi, uh, if c i and in this case, of course, if c i and if q i are the same, not these two, and if for f gamma i, you have a different expression, which is alpha divided by phi. Please note that if phi is equal to zero, this will become meaningless, as I have shown here, uh, this will become undefined, and in calculator, you will find syntax error. and. Uh, of course, that is why this expression is valid for phi is greater than zero. These are small uh, uh, nitty gritties, but these actually matter when you work in a design office or for your exam purpose. Okay, uh, and now let us see uh, the effect of water level on calculation of Q. Remember, this is our general expression, our general bearing capacity equation. Here in Q, uh, Q is uh, in the second term of this equation, Q is the uh, surcharge pressure at the foundation level. So that will be, in simple term, that will be equal to gamma times GF, right? But this uh, gamma, uh, which I have denoted gamma 1, uh, up to the depth of excavation, the unit weight of soil I have denoted as gamma 1 for, for clarity purpose. So there may be three cases. Uh, the, let us see the effect of water table here. If uh, in case 1, if the water level is at the foundation level or below the foundation level, gamma 1, there will be no effect on this gamma 1. So if it is uh, a moist unit weight, gamma 1, that can be directly used in the calculation here and that will give you Q, Q equal to or the surcharge pressure equal to gamma 1 times Tf. In case 2, if you have a situation like this that the water table or the water level is up there at the ground level, that means all the soil uh, within the zone of Df will be submerged and in that case you will have to use effective unit weight of the water which is gamma 1 minus the unit weight of water gamma w okay so that will give you q equal to uh, gamma 1 prime times t okay and if you have uh, in case 3 uh, if you have the location of water level or table somewhere between ground level and the excavation level say at a depth d from the ground level in that case your uh, soil within depth d will be equal to gamma that is the moist unit weight and the uh, soil below the depth D will be saturated and you'll have to use the effective unit, unit weight of uh, this soil in calculation of your Q value. So that will be equal to gamma 1 times T plus gamma 1 prime times Df minus T. So you don't have to remember all these cases, you just you know, have to, you, you just have to uh, understand and appreciate what is going on actually I and mean, where to make the changes okay when you have case one situation you do this you have case two or any other situation you may have any other situation i don't know i mean i could visualize up to this much that there may be case one two and three okay and on the basis of the location of your water level within the depth of foundation the value of this q will also keep changing Okay, so this is very important. Sometimes uh, we ignore it and in many textbooks you'll find 
uh, the equation is written as gamma df nq and gamma b gamma n gamma this is not correct actually uh, here this gamma means the gamma within the depth of foundation and here this gamma means the gamma of the soil below the footing so these two gamma have different meanings okay and let us see how the water level actually influences the calculation of gamma 2 prime which is the gamma below the foundation level as we are just talking about so uh, in case one you may have a scenario like this that, that the uh, all the soils below the ground level is submerged if the soil if the water table is up there and there may be a situation where the water level is just at the excavation level so in this case also the uh, soil below the footing is submerged so for in, in in any of these two situations as I have explained as i have explained in this case one you have to use effective unit weight of uh, soil below the footing in calculation of your bearing capacity so this has to be effective unit weight uh, for case two if the location of water table is somewhere below the width of the footing uh, be, uh, at a depth below the width of the footing so if this is your footing b and if the depth if the water level is not located within the depth equal to b uh, then there will be no influence on the uh, unit weight of water so if the unit weight of this soil uh, within this influence zone is equal to gamma 2 and this is likely to be a moist unit weight so effective in uh, as effective unit weight in the equation you will have to use gamma 2 prime is equal to gamma 2 and it can be somewhere in between okay at a depth d below the footing and the remaining part is b minus d if it is if the situation is like this you will have to uh, calculate it calculate and weighted average of unit weight within this zone which is equal to d times gamma 2 plus b minus d times gamma 2 prime and the whole is divided by the whole depth or the thickness that is b so that will give you the average weighted unit weight within this zone so depending on the situation try to understand and appreciate I, am, I i always emphasize on not memorizing things rather you must always try to understand and appreciate what you are dealing with try to catch the philosophy don't try or don't be bogged down too much with the you know uh, equations and calculations and blah, blah blah try to understand the concept first okay so depending on the situation you'll be using uh, the proper value of gamma 2 prime in this equation and then uh, you can easily obtain your gross ultimate bearing capacity uh, using Meyerhoff's equation okay thanks very much thanks for being with part two and very soon i'll come back with part three